170, um, sorry, and close at closer to 170,000 now. Um, per metric ton, so which is a, a significant like 80% spike for the season. Uh, now compare that to what happened this prior season. Um, that's 10% only or a mild 10% spike for soybeans uh, was was huge. There was a surge of over 120% spike for for soybeans this past season, right? Going from say 160,000 metric ton start, um, and the last transaction we did, uh, we sold for closer to 350,000 Naira per ton. And I'm talking X, X North, X Taraba, X Benue, uh, where majority is coming from, or Kaduna. Um, for, for maize as well, um, we also saw um, huge jumps. So started around 140,000 Naira per metric ton, peaked probably closer to 230,000 per, per metric ton, right? So we're talking 60, 70%. Um, price price increases, and and why why what what is the reason for this? Um, it's never it's never an easy answer. It's, it's always complex, um, but we we see a mixture of lagging effects from Corona. Um, we see oil price declines, and so that's then shifting more money into commodity trading. Um, sovereign wealth bonds also yields went down, uh, so more money. Was looking for a home and found that in in agricultural products um inflation as well is a strong is a strong factor but i mean underlining all of this it's it's purely market dynamics right uh, nigeria has a fundamental supply issue um we're, we're at a deficit when it comes to the production of of stable crops grains oil seeds that's that we need um, and so until that underlying um, factor is fixed, we're going to continue to see this mismatch of, of demand and therefore um, increase increase prices. Uh, let me let me let's jump into this current season. I want to see if I can share my screen. Bear with me a second. Okay, yeah, so 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 generally speaking, um generally speaking, the, the, the season the season is, is moving along well, right? Um planting went well. We see the, the weather, the weather was was mild to average. Um very few weather challenges took place across the country. We got small reports about um late rains and flooding across the central part of the country, but nothing significant um that would affect affect yields. Um, so, so we're poised, we're poised to do well. Apex does an annual survey, which we reach out to thousands of farmers within our networks and outside, uh, to, to do a verbal, um, questionnaire about their outlook for the season and, and what they expect. Now the, the survey is not yet out. Please stay, stay in touch with us. Uh, we expect it to come out very shortly, um, but I have preliminary results that I can share now um, that will just um, set, set the table of what, what we can look forward to. Uh, so in general, the, the outlook is, is positive. Um, everybody saw what happened last year in terms of, of maize prices. And so uh, a lot of producers, a lot of farmers are back in, in the market again. And they, they went, they either increased um, the farmland that, that they used or are planning to sell some more bags than, than they did in the prior season. Uh, so just to um, rally off a, a few stats, 50% of farmers are more optimistic about this upcoming 21 season compared to last year. Um, the, it was an opportunity um, to, to make profits that they, they, they want to take advantage of going forward. Um, in the same vein, 80% of farmers intend to sell more bags this year compared to, to last season um, to take advantage of, of the prices, as I mentioned. Um, so we're suspecting that we will see um, strong, strong supply. Um, so prices are going to, to take the usual dip that, that happens at the start of every season. Um, but because of how strong, but, but because of um, strong supply, then it's going to, it's going to um, decrease. But then because of strong demand, um, we see we see the 
the prices rallying and rising rising quite quickly. Um, there will be a lot of money in in the markets chasing chasing few commodities. Um, so we expect everybody um, to be out there with cash and trying to mop up as as much as they can. Um, several deals will, will take place and look and see companies shore up commodities for the first two two to three months um, to make sure that they have probably likely 50% of supply that they'll need for the rest of the year. Um, heading towards February, March, we anticipate a, a dip in, in prices, you know, after most, produ um, most production um, facilities, processors, millers, have shored up enough enough grains to last them over a period of time. Um, they will step away from the markets, and we will likely see um, prices um, decrease marginally. Um, that obviously will last only a little, only a short a short time, and will pick up within a month or two. Um, they'll be back in the markets to to end the season, and then you'll see the the typical the typical price rise um, leading towards the end of the season. Um, just, just a few more, more stats from the survey, um, let me fall back on again. So, so farmers are anticipating that they will sell more bags, um, than, than they did, uh, last season. Uh, so 73% of farmers are looking to sell even more bags. Only 5% will do the same amount and then 22% will, will do less. And, and then here we go directly from the, from the farmer's mouths again. Um, looking at the rains, uh, majority say that say that overwhelming majority says that say that the rains were were favorable um, for them. Uh, so so yeah, I think I think maize 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 will be strong. Um, we anticipate a, a good year a good year for for maize. And when I speak maize, just to clarify, especially given the audience that I'm talking to, I'm I'm, I'm talking about northern maize and not. Um, any any maize um, raised in the south, grown in the south, or, or cross border maize, um, which again I think we'll come back to the the impact and effect of that um, towards the end uh, when we talk about reacting reacting to the season. Um, so so let's let's move on let's move on to, to soya bean uh, where we'll see we'll see a similar a similar trade taking place. We already shared the price increases um, from last season, um, so I anticipate. Uh, a significantly increased amount of soybean being, being planted um, across the country. Um, the, the data that came back from the survey was, was a bit more nuanced than I expected. Um, so so all probably about the even amount of, of farmers um, are saying that they planted more or less soybeans. Um, so that, that is, still, is still a mixed result there. Um, but nonetheless, in line with, with expectation, we see that again, um, close to 70% of, of, of farmers are expecting to sell, sell more um, soybean this year than they did last year, um, taking, taking advantage of that 120% um, um, price hike uh, that, that they saw. Um, as, as, far, as far as demand, uh, sorry, quickly, and then also rains again in, in the same vein, a majority of farmers are seeing the rains as 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 having a, a favorable favorable impact. Um, so supply for soybeans is is looking good. Um, there will be more supply out there in the market than than they did have uh, last year, as more farmers planted. Um, but uh, coming back to the central theme and topic, the demand far outstrips um, the supply that that we have locally. Um, for for soybean in particular, it's interesting to see the engagement. Um, that we are getting from customers looking looking for soybean, so we definitely see the spike. There'll be more products in the markets that are derived from from the bean. Um, uh, we're looking at international demand as well for soybean. Um, a lot of people are, are talking about what it would mean to to export, and so we see a lot of pressure on on, on prices. Um, so soybean is also going going to be tough. Um, but but good for producers and good good for farmers. Um, to, to there's a window of opportunity to make significant um, margins when when it comes to, to soybean production. Um, so so again, this is just this is just a taste of of what we're seeing. Um, when the full report comes out, it will have a lot more data, a lot more information about the farmers interviewed, where they're located, um, their prospects, um, a lot more. 
um, pricing forecasts as well. All of that will be included in, in the final report. So please um, stay close to Apex to, to see that when, when it's ready. Um, I'll take a pause now. I believe that's the end of the first session, but then if we can come back in a few minutes, I'll talk about uh, the reaction to these prices, what's, what's driving it in the next, in the, in, over the next season, and then how best to position yourself to, to take advantage of these, uh, these price hikes that we're seeing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jimenez Orca. Uh, just as we expected, we expected a sound delivery and we expected um, concrete numbers. Thank you for that um, uh, background overview and giving us um, what to expect. So it looks like more money is being redirected into our sector and um, we're seeing more money available to so seeing um, more harvest, we're anticipating more harvest in the 2021, 2022 season. That's good news. Um, from the presentation, we're projecting about an 18% increase in maize harvest and about 12% increase in uh, soya outlook. This is very, very interesting. So we need to know that many of these um, stakeholders, the grains, the processors, the grains, um, the grains processors are going to the market and they're going to be trying to get 30 to 50% of their annual needs. They're gonna be stockpiling. And um, seems like we're also gonna be seeing some um, government application activities also. Okay, but the good news is that we're seeing an, uh, a slightly increase in uh, maize harvest due to the amount of um, grains being planted. Thank you very much for that. And um, we're gonna be taking questions. Anybody who has questions, feel free to just type them at the chat box, um, we'll be acknowledging those questions and uh, towards the end of the program, we'll start rolling those questions out to start uh, so that our presenter for the day can also do justice and respond to us. Again, thank you very much for that. We're looking forward to more. Um, that was a mouth-watering presentation. For now, we have our next presenter, um, which is gonna be Animal Care Service Consult. They're gonna be sharing with us their products. So stay tuned. Again. I'd like to thank all our participants. Thank you to everybody who is joining us right now, taking this precious time on Saturday to learn about what is going on in our industry and also to learn more importantly, what the maize and soy outlook is looking like for the 2021, 2022 season. So without further delay, um, we have Animal Care uh, who has the floor right now. Thank you very much to all. Can we please unmute uh, Animal Care so that it can give their presentation? Okay, okay. Thank, you. Thank, thank, thank you so much, um, Mr. Moderator. I want to say a big thank you to panel for, for this um, opportunity uh, to talk um, about these um, uh, products. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to talk about uh, Nutria. Um, animal Care, we are in the um, feed uh, business. Um, we used to produce um, only the mash uh, products for, for, for broilers. And recently we opened, uh, commissioned a new plant, the uh, Aedon plant, um, where pellets and crumbs is being uh, produced. So we decided to come up with this um, new product, uh, which is branded Nutria, uh, Nutria products. And then we have it in, in two um, brands. We have the Nutria Super Starter Crops. Uh, the Nutria Starter Crops is um, the feed uh, that will be given to broilers actually from uh, the, the one, um, um, the 22. And then from the 22 uh, to slaughter, the bed should be on the uh, Nutria Super Finisher Pellets. So you start with the Nutria Super Starter Crumbs and then you finish to market uh, with the Nutria Super Finisher uh, Pellets. Uh, but let me talk basically on um, the benefits uh, that we have uh, with these um, products. As well as we are Animal Care Pioneer, um, the Haba products uh, in the Nigerian uh, poultry uh, industry. Uh, so we have quite a number of harbor uh, uh, products in this, um, in this product. Um, 
One of them is the super glue, the, the popular super glue, which is very popular in the market, which actually helps to turn up the liver, uh, which also acts as a, a herbal uh, growth um, promoter. Um, also, we have in this product um, the Embiotic. Embiotic is also a kind of growth promoter, which is also a herbal uh, uh, product uh, from plants. One thing that is very, uh, um, looking at the regulatory uh, environment now, uh, especially in NAVDAC and some other uh, regulatory bodies in Nigeria and some other parts of the world, are also discouraging the use of uh, antibiotics and a lot of um, and the use of allopathic products. Um, so this antibiotic is a form of um, phytobiotic, uh, which um, is from plants, you know, a kind of um, antibiotic from plants can do what an antibiotic can do. And it also helps to tone up the liver. Apart from that, it's also helpful in the intestine uh, to help the, the, the gut health, intestinal health. And, if, and of course, from the intestine that some of these nutrients consumed uh, by birds uh, will be absorbed. So these are the two major uh, herbal products uh, that we have in this particular product. And then we also have the acidifier, uh, which also help to reduce the level of uh, microbial contamination in raw material. Uh, this also help sanitize the pig and reduce the use of antibiotics and also reduce the rate of uh, infection. A good acidifier is also part uh, of this uh, particular product. And then we have enzymes, or we have a multi-enzyme, um, the NSP enzyme. Uh, that is the non-starch saccharide enzyme, uh, which also help uh, in very good um, performance so that the best can come to market with uh, health. So uh, these are the products that we have. But in terms of, let me summarize, in terms of the benefit that you have, uh, you have enhanced liability. Enhanced liability, that means if you are starting with about 1,000 beds at the end of the reality period, uh, you should have close to that number. Uh, as a result of some of these herbal products that we have, it will enhance liability and also increase the um, dress weight uh, uh, when they get to, to, to market um, size. Um, better taste, and uh, of course, um, because of this herbal uh, 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 additive that we also have, it also impacts on the taste uh, of, 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 of the meat uh, coming out uh, when the goats are, are slaughtered. Uh, and of course, the price is also very affordable and also uh, competitive um, price. So let me, I'm introducing to you uh, Nutria products, uh, of the broiler farmers. And uh, next, um, I also talk about the animals. Three years back, we decided to come up with this product because um, we discovered that um, it's also becoming very difficult sometimes for farmers to get very good um, uh, micronutrients. Uh, we have a lot of applications in the market uh, when it comes to amino acids, specifically lysine and methylene. They are not buying from very good source. Uh, Primitives too. Um, and of course, farmers might not be able to also analyze some of these products individually. So we decided to come up with a product. This is what we call a micronutrient concentrate. The micronutrient concentrate is com composed of the amino acid, the, the essential amino acid, specifically lysine and methylene, uh, the premixes, uh, that is the vitamin and the mineral premix is also there. The toxin binder uh, is also there. I've talked about um, superly, it's also there. Uh, we have enzymes, the NSP enzymes, uh, the MBOT. Uh, so it's a combination of micronutrient concentrates. And then we have it in different categories for layers, uh, for broilers, for chicks and growers. So what the farmer needs to do is just to buy this micronutrient uh, concentrate. This is also, of course, is probably the most vital, you know, in feed production. And the farmer will have the macro now, the macro ingredient, uh, starting from um, the maize, the soya, the limestone, and also the wheat of You need just only four uh, macro ingredients uh, to, to add. To, to make finish, uh, finish. And for the layers, what's also very vital and also very important, uh, what we have in this product is the yolk colorant, you know, the golden yolk colorant. You are using the layer 
and that's basically that comes from 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 the new colorant that is that is added and we have uh, in this particular product and also what is also very uh what you have note is also the the machine that is used in the production process we we we, we, we introduced the uh, double paddle uh, mixer uh, in the business industry in Nigeria. The first double uh, shaft paddle mixer uh, was installed uh, in a, in a premix um, factory years back. So uh, this also ensures very good homogeneous mix. So we are sure of the kind of product uh, that is coming out. And uh, of recent or recently, uh, we also introduced the animix range also for, for swine. Introduced that of swine a um, few months back. We also introduced for 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 large animal. Uh, that is for the ruminants. Uh, also a few months, few months, few months back. So we have the animal strength for for poultry. We have the animal strength for swine. We have the animal strength for 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 large animal. For for easy uh, feed milling uh, on the farm uh, by the farmers. And of course, the nutria and the animal products are. are the, the, the material is being produced in the southwest and it's available in the southwest. And, and for the anime, it's available all over the country. Uh, uh, you can get it by contacting our northern operations office in Kano and then our eastern operation office in Asaba. And of course, in the southwest, we have the production plant and office uh, at Okere. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the moderator. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Peter Akintola, for that um, beautiful presentation. Again, we'd like to thank all our sponsors for making this uh, program uh, possible to farmers. Um, I'd like to thank Amobin Group for their presentation, DSL Pharma, mm -hmm. showcasing um, indigenous excellence in the production of um, essential pharmaceuticals um, for the poultry industry. We saw a video of their production plant, um, Diversity um, DSL Pharma. Thank you very much for letting us know about that. And uh, the contact information for the company will also be on the flyers, which will be showcased at every interlude during this program. And I would also like to thank Animal Care Service Consult, um, Dr. Pika, Peter Akitola, representing Animal Care, for letting us know about the brand new pellets, uh, and crumbles, uh, neutral feed, uh, the broiler starter and the broiler finisher, and uh, letting us know about the impact on uh, uh, productivity, FCR, weight gain, and all the others. Um, and also the premix products available nationwide, um, the different uh, premixes for the various categories of poultry products and ruminants also. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, so next on the agenda, um, we're going to have a product presentation mm. by um, none other than Seva Sante. Uh, we have Dr. Hamoud Seidu, who's going to be presenting on their range of products. And I believe it's going to be the core immune range of products. It's going to let us know what the innovation on their vaccination is doing for poultry. And it's going to give us some details on that. Do we have uh, Dr. Um, Seidu available to let us know about um, the core immune range of products? Mm -hmm. If we have several uh, presentation available, please excuse us. OK, we have Dr. Seidu. Welcome, Dr. Seidu. Thank you very we much, Dr. OK. We are available. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> this is the last one. I think it's better he goes to the first one. Uh, OK, OK. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. So as usual, we, we come back again today to talk about uh, uh, our uh, most innovative product, the Seva Corimun vaccine is especially designed for the laying birds the commercial layers, the breeders. And uh, this is a, a vaccine that combines viruses, antigen, and also bacteria, which makes it um, a kind of unique product that we can offer or that can be available in the vaccine uh, market. And this vaccine, one of the most impressive things about it is it's, the aim of the product is it protects uh, both the uh, the pullets and also the consumer. So the perspective is more on 
on a public health perspective, and then on the other end, and the protection against some of the major diseases uh, that the valences are part of the vaccine. Next, please. <clears throat> Next. Okay, sorry. Hello. We are with you. Okay. Next. Next slide. Okay. Thank you. So this this vaccine. Sorry. Can you go to the? Okay. I don't know what's happening. And uh, okay, thank you. I can't see the screen. Eh? Apologies about that, Dr. Seydou. Um, no problem. No problem. Immediately. Um, so let's have the slides again and let's follow the presenter. Thank you very much. Okay. back this is the last okay thank you <clears throat> so this vaccine the corimuns they are highly innovative vaccines and uh, when we look at the, the range it is composed by two vaccines we have the corimun 4k and then the corimun 7k <clears throat> so when we take the corimun 4k uh, this contains uh, strain or maybe valances for the coriza we can see we have the coriza serovar uh, a serovar b serovar c and also a protection that it can confer for the salmonella enteritidis including a cross protection with salmonella galiceptecum that's part of the d group uh, salmonellosis and then on the other side we have the coimun 7k that contains three viruses and four bacteria Corimun, uh, the coriza serovar A, serovar B, serovar C, the salmonella enteritidis, <clears throat> and then with the cross protection with the salmonella galiceptecum, we have also valences for Newcastle disease, infectious bronchitis, and uh, egg drop syndrome. So when we look at it on a layer farming perspective, uh, most of these diseases, they usually in a normal farming condition, farmers used to do them on a <clears throat> on several vaccination perspective, on, a, on several vaccination with several vaccines. So with this kind of technology, a farmer will not need to stress himself with different vaccination, but with one shot, uh, everything will be done with one shot in terms of vaccination. And that's what makes it, in terms of vaccination in Africa, one of the number one vaccine uh, in terms of vaccination in Africa, and also the number one vaccine uh, for infectious coriza vaccination in Africa, the number one vaccine as well for salmonella and teritidis. Yet in Nigeria, yes, um, people still use it, but when we compare our, the overall usage of the vaccine in the other African countries, such as Cameroon, uh, Ivory Coast, or Senegal, or Kenya, or even Tanzania, this is really a, a good advantage or a good opportunity that uh, farmers here, we can try to key in to try to help us also to improve uh, the farm productivity, especially in a situation where we are, where everybody will need to look at uh, the cost of uh, the production. <clears throat> Next. So to make it quick, in terms of take home, not on this corimun, uh, I believe what is going to be the most important thing for a farmer to keep is the usage of these two vaccines is not like maybe you choose one or you leave two. Uh, the whole is designed to complement each other. So the first injection is supposed to be for the Corimun 4K, which is expected to be done between uh, eight and 12 weeks of age. And then the second one, where mostly people usually used to use the three in one, like the ND, IB, or EDS, we recommend the Corimun 7K, which one will also boost the coriza 
and then also make the first uh, shot of the three in one to complete uh, um, it between the 14 and the uh, 16 weeks of age. So after doing this kind of vaccination, we believe that this, uh, the flock that will receive the combination of these two vaccines will be well protected against the mentioned disease, the coryza, the Newcastle disease, the infectious bronchitis, and uh, the drop uh, syndrome. So this is what we have to present to you, especially this Corimon that we believe in a lot and we keep uh, presenting it at every occasion. So then everybody will king into and then take the good advantages that uh, it has, the added values that it carries. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much, um, Dr. Seydou, um, for that beautiful presentation on the modern vaccines that provide modern day relevant protection on our farmers. We have all the Coriza types and also um, NDIBEDS coverage from just one vaccine. Less stress for the birds, one administration, uh, multiple protection. Thank you very much, Dr. Seydou, for that. And uh, questions will also be asked during the program. And uh, as the program is going on, you can go ahead and help answer any questions that come up. So please stay on standby. And uh, again, let's thank our sponsor, um, Dr. Seydu, one more time. So now, just to recap with you, we have various, various um, uh, digital presence, digital platforms that we are using to um, let you know about the um, innovations and what we are doing, especially Nigerian poultry show that is coming up. We have various platforms. Um, I think Dr. Okwea Bato uh, has issue over uh, on the other end. Yes. Um, I would like to take over from here and I'll be uh, calling on uh, Mr. Okra to come back to continue with this presentation for us on the maze outlook. Uh, for 2021-2022 session. Mr. Emmons, please, I don't know if you are ready for us again to take charge once again to continue the program. Thank you very yeah. much. If you are on board, please come over, sir. You also have internet connection problem, eh? Hello, good afternoon, um, everyone. Good afternoon, you're welcome, sir. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so so thank you so much. It's been it's been very enlightening so far, um, especially for those of us that are not on the protection side to be able to to hear and learn from from other expert, experts in in the field. So so we left off with um, just a recap of of prior seasons, um, looking more at numbers, um, evaluating what happened. Um, and then projecting to the future and forecasting what we see for this season. Now, and the question then becomes, how, how, do, we, how do we react to this? And, and this would be a lot more um, qualitative and um, more of a discussion of how um, you as processors and millers um, 
can can respond to the dynamics of of the markets that that was seen. Uh, so you know, just just to jump right into it, it's it's a bit of a clash, cliche, um, cliche, sorry, by now, but uh, cash, cash is king. Um, if if you look at it, it comes down to um, who has the most money at the start of the season and how effectively they're able to then um, distribute that to acquire acquire commodities. And we all know the cycle is very cyclical um, at the start of the season with the abundance of supply, but how are we able to, to take advantage of that? Um, and, and the key there is, is cash, um, or at least some sort of structured financing arrangement or agreement. Um, Apex, Apex does have such a facility um, in which we're able to convert any collateral that you have into cash that will allow you to go back into the market um, and, and keep on continuing to buy and stock up um, while we keep your goods um, secured. Um, so if anybody's interested in such a product, um, please do not hesitate to, to reach out to myself or um, the financing farm, um, financing arm of, of Apex um, ran by my colleague Samira, who I believe is on, on the phone as well. Um, but but that's that's key. If you want to take advantage, if you want to compete this upcoming season, uh, you need to be able to structure some sort of agreement that allows you to be in the market and continuously buy. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just buying, it's how are you then able to um, effectively disperse that cash to retrieve commodities. Um, so diversifying your, your source is, is key. Um, I would, I would say it's almost more important than, than the commodity itself. Um, so what relationships do you have in the market? What, what network that do you have? If you don't have, how do you build those, those networks and relationships? Because um, just having money sitting in a bank account is not enough. Or just sending out money to acquire grains and then you get five grains in, in return is, is not going to help you either. Um, so, so it's key that you have strong um, sourcing networks, sourcing arms. Apex is always willing to, to partner with any organization to do this um, as, as well. Um, second for me, I would say is, is the need to um, backward integrate, um, at least for, for millers and, and processes to backward integrate um, so that farmers can then receive the support um, that they need. If it can easily form a symbiotic relationship um, between a, a processor and a producer um, when it when it comes to to grains this this upcoming season, um, I, I think I think this is one underutilized tool. Uh, there's a lot of alignment between both parties, um, and especially if you can use it as a tool to to share risk. Um, yes, there will be some, you know. So in that sense, a a processor or a miller will then fund fund the farmer, enabling them to to produce at at max capacity. Um, and then obviously, obviously having the, the offtake agreement on the back end of that as well um, is, is a plus. And for the producer, they'll have the capital that, that's needed at the start of the season to, to strongly, um, uh, to, 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 to enable them to farm at their full capacity. Um, there will be some give up um, in terms of, of pricing at the end to the offtaker. But I think that's that's more than compensated for by the predictability of the nature and the ability to manage relationships going forward. Um, so Apex has a host of tools as well that can that can enable this, such as forward contracts, um, Algor schemes. So again, if if anyone is interested, we can we can have that that discussion. Uh, lastly, I'd mention here is is just the need to have um, on farm storage facilities available. So we talk about the price and um, appreciation that's anticipated, but how does a producer um, get to take advantage of this um, if they do not have um, access to a storage facility um, at on, on their farm um, before they can move out? Otherwise, then the commodities goes into the hands of, of traders and speculators, and there's very little that comes back to, to the producer. Um, so what does it take to then enable that to happen, whether acquiring a loan to construct some sort of facility, um, pushing for assistance from your local government as a coalition, if you come together and push for, for access to storage facilities in your location, um, that's, that's key. Um, Apex obviously always has um, storage facilities located across the country. Um, so if you want to take advantage of that, um, that's also, also an op op opportunity 
on that there. Um, just, just quickly, maybe, maybe a bit of a side. I also did want to mention, you know, uh, there, there seems to be this uh, this mix up between AFEX and CBN and what the relationship there is. You know, so AFEX is is a, is a commodity exchange where neutral party uh, matching buyers and sellers. Uh, for this past year, for the green stabilization uh, stabilization program, CBN worked with AFEX to acquire commodities, and therefore, multiple stakeholders were able to receive discounted. Um, grains. Uh, we're happy to do that. We anticipate doing that again. Um, but just to say, our market is, is bigger than 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 that. Um, we we have grains to offer. We're always buying. We're always selling. Um, so definitely contact us. Uh, either one of my colleagues um, that's ready and willing to engage. Um, CBN cannot do it all. There's only going to be a limited supply. The market is 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 significantly larger um, than than that government intervention and that program. And and we're here and open. And ready to do business um, at at any scale with anyone that's that's interested. Um, another another feedback that we also get is is our prices compared to to other grains that are sourced elsewhere, uh, specifically cross cross border maize that's coming into the country. Um, you know, and that's that's just a market dynamic. You have to look at the quality of the grains that are being received and the ability of other countries to produce at a more efficient rate than. And Nigeria is so majority of Apex is going from production grain production zones in, in the north of the country. And so it'd be it'd be more challenging to compete um, with with a grain that's being imported. Um, but you know, as, as producers, you have to be careful and how do you manage your risk, especially with what's, what's, what's happening with um, currency fluctuations. Um, it's, it, it's, it's just something to be aware of and, and to note um, going forward. So, so just to, to end up and, and round up, I, want, I just want to take a minute to, to look at, at risk. You know, we, we talk about the, the anticipated um, price appreciation that will take place, um, but quite frankly, you know, uh, nothing, nothing is guaranteed, right? Um, you know, it was, it was a good year for producers last year. We anticipate that it will be a good year for producers um, going forward. But let's be careful about um, making the most of this opportunity and not overstretching yourself. So this isn't the season or the time to start going into large scale construction products or investment or, or capital intensive investments. Um, you still need to be protective and you know, commodity prices can, can rise just as quickly as, as they can fall. Um, luckily, the difference between that and, and shares is that, you know, at the end of the day, you still have something um, to go home with um, because there's still value in the underlying assets. But nonetheless, uh, you, you still do have to be careful um, to, to manage your risk. Uh, so if there's anything you can do to protect yourself from downside turns, I'm talking about flexible contracts, um, some give up in terms of price, but then um, the receipt of predictability on the other end you know, definitely want to encourage um, everybody to, to get into that. Uh, another big risk that, that we see is just the influx of, of traders and, specula and speculators in, into the market. Um, you know, a lot of them made money last season. And so we, we, can, we can see them coming back into the market and, and, and trying to chase those returns, returns again. Um, so how do you hedge yourself against that? Um, is, is something that your risk departments and teams have to think about, you know, entering into forward contracts, anything you can do um, to, to mitigate that, that influx is, is something that should be considered as well. Um, so, so thank you very much. I appreciate you taking, taking the time to listen. Um, myself, my colleagues were, were, also, were also here and available um, to answer any questions you have later and to see how we can, we can partner together going into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Tahemant Okar. Thank you again for that um, brilliant presentation. What we are hearing is that you have to go into the market with cash. Cash is king. Um, a lot of traders and speculators have made money in the last season and uh, they are sure to be going back in. But on the other hand, we're anticipating more grains, more farmers have planted, slightly increased yield. Again, 18% increase in maize another 12 to 15%, 12% increase in soya. Uh, we're looking at those figures, but if more people are coming back into the market, we have to take position 
um, from a cash standpoint, you have to be ready to offtake. It seems these farmers are not going to sell to us on credit. Um, again, we should also be careful. Um, they say cash is king, but uh, profitability is the kingdom. The king without a kingdom has no throne. So whatever we do, as we are gathering the cash and going to the market, we also have to have good insight. And we have to make sure whatever we are doing is adding to a profitable organization. Um, without further ado, um, I would like to thank our um, sponsors once again. But before we go on, we still have um, uh, an introduction session uh, about the Poultry Association of Nigeria Zonal Executives. Um, we initially introduced the Central Working Committee. But we're also going to introduce the Zonal Executive. Then we have a product presentation, very important product presentation um, from the AMO Group. Um, we'll be having a product presentation from them. But let's introduce our Zonal uh, Chairman and Executive. So while we're doing that and get ready for that, please be, um, be aware that we have the Nigerian Poultry Show website. It's on the chat group. You can take a minute to look at the chat group. It is the www.nigeriapoultryshow.com. That is the chat, uh, that is the website for the poultry show. It is coming on the second and the fourth. You can register under two categories as a visitor or as an exhibitor. Please go there and register. Again, we are physical, but we are also digital. We have seen the efficiency of using digital systems to collate organized data. So for us to process you faster and more efficiently, go to the nigeriapoultryshow.com now, share this website, start registering. It's gonna be a fun event. We already have our lineup of our sponsors and exhibitors who are coming, who don't want to seize that, up, who want to seize that opportunity. We've had a one year break um, without a poultry show, actually a two year break without a poultry show because of the pandemic last year. So please start to talk about it. Let's start to um, register. We will be announcing our keynote speakers and our sponsors and exhibitors in the next few um, in the next few um, days and weeks to come. Thank you very much. So right now, if you have any questions, our speakers are still here on standby. Please go ahead and put your questions uh, in the chat group, and we'll filter them and we'll take what we need to take to avoid redundancy. But now we have our full committee for the Poultry Association of Nigeria Open States. All of them are here, and now we have their contacts. So I'll start with uh, the chairperson of Yewa, Mrs. Lala. We have our, her information there. She's the chairperson for um, the Yewa Zone, and that's our email address and our phone number. And we also have Mr. Isaac Ajani, who's the treasurer for the Poultry Association of Nigeria, Open State. Um, that is his contact. Then we have Alaji Shitu Babatunde, the chairman for the Remo zone. Um, okay, I think um, we need to send the updated list. Uh, this is actually, uh, this needs to be updated, our zonal chairman. So if uh, the technical team can get the updated zonal chairman, I think it's on our panel website. This information uh, seems to be outdated. So, um, because we have Alaji Shitu Baba today as the chairman for Remo, but um, Ms. Alaji Onosoya um, uh, um, as the chairman for Remo, right now. So I think we need to update this list. Um, we'll get back to this um, very soon. Um, sorry about that um, uh, slight uh, error. But OK, now we have um, a presentation from the, while we correct that, we have a presentation from the AMO group. And it's going to be talking about their next product right now. So if we, uh, without further delay, let's line up the presentation from Amo Group. I think uh, Mr. Lawrence is going to be taking that presentation. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about that um, technical um, confusion. Um, Mr. Lawrence um, um, or Mr. IBM, if you can unmute Mr. Lawrence so they can go ahead and take the next presentation. Um, they are on standby. Thank you very much. Let's not delay any further. They have some lovely products they want to discuss with us. So let's give them that opportunity to our sponsors. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
good, good afternoon all. Can I can I be on? Can I be allowed to share, please? Of course, you can, sir. Go ahead. If it's not going now, you can still disabled. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Can am I audible over there? Very well. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I want to thank every member of uh, Pandog. Uh, just before I go ahead, I want to assure the executive that we are part of you. We are coming there to to uh, Abjukuta Live. We've always been there. We are part of Pandok, so we will always be there. We'll come around and make sure that the place is properly, um, we make a good show of that place. And I wish that particular show of this year very, very successful. Last year, we were not there, but this year, I'm sure we'll do better things. I'll just give you a small summary, not much of a thing. You guys have known much about us. AMO as a group, we tried ourselves that we have the one-stop shop in the poultry industry. Why do we say so? It's because of this little thing that is here. Uh, we are uh, into the feed business, to the dough business, into the drugs and vaccine business. So if you look at the logos, logos there, we kind of summarize this all we do. The next thing is just to show you the pictorials. Ammo being, what do we do? We basically produce feed from above, from our and also from just where we produce, uh, produce all, all, all kinds of feed. I'll show you briefly. Um, that of Amu Farm, we know ourselves very well. We are into the chick production. Um, all the products that we have, we will let you know in a short while. Diversity Solution is one of our company that are into the uh, manufacturing uh, importation of drugs. We've been in the market for quite some time. DSF Pharma is a sister company. This one, we actually produce everything we have in this country. And our, our baby, which the Noila brand, Noila products, Noila bed that we have today. And we are very, very proud of this bed. Uh, though we are having a lot of people coming in now because they see the beauty of this bed. So what do we do at Farm today? Basically, we are into the old chicks production from layers to cockerel to the Noila birds, the point of play, frozen chicken, and also beef. We are also, also into fish production too. We have our facilities all over the country and also the rendering product, which is basically the raw material we can use to produce uh, fish. Amo Farm, what do we do? We are basically into produ production of uh, day old chicks. Like I told you, Amo Farm, we produce the premium chick uh, quality uh, in Nigeria markets today. We pioneered the artificial insemination. If you look at your picture on your right there, see the way we do it. All our beds, we rear them in cages. If you look at the middle uh, picture and the one below, the advantage of it is quite known to all of us. We rear everything down from the very beginning to where we call the beds. It, it makes them grow uniformly and we give them the required doses, two doses of respect for them to actually take care of their marex because we have quite a lot of uh, diseases nowadays. So that's what we actually do. We ensure that you get your beds, the right beds. We, there's a saying that, uh, if you are running a poultry farm, you have your feet. Uh, you have a problem with your feet, you can always change it. You have your problem with um, your manager or your staff, you can always change them. But if you have a problem with your day old chick, it's a problem. You will live with it. So that's why you should shine your eyes very well. You know, take a good look at what you want to do and go for the best of the hatchery to pick the beds that you will stock in your farm. With that one, you go home and rest with Amu farm products. You go home and rest. You don't have a problem. These are some of the pictures too. Look at all the beds. They are in battery cages. Like I said, I won't take too much of your time. These are the broilers section. This is where we rear our broilers. Our broilers, the day old chicks, the one for commercial productions, they are reared in our own pen. Although this is our own pen, but what we do here is what we also encourage a lot of our farmers out there to do. We educate them, ensure that they take the best of bed. 
because these are the birds that grow quite fast. We, we, our breed is purely abo acre. They are short-legged, but very big chest. And you are sure of getting your required weight at a very, very good time. You know, the birds can come up for about two kg, uh, two kilos within 30, 35 days. You are true with under proper management. Before you know, your birds are gone. So always look for the best of hatchery to pick in your beds. Because if you make the mistake of picking the wrong, bed, wrong beds, you are in serious problem. If you make the mistake of beginning to buy beds from places that we recall, we, we, we all try to refer to as floor, you are making a big mistake. Ammo Farm is very, very open to all. You can give us a call, you can reach us, and we'll give you the best. In fact, our, concern, our own concern is for us to partner with farmers, not speculators, not distributors. Although we sell to them, but we want to do business directly with the farmers. So anyone who has issues with their bed should just come up to us so that we can give them beds. The broilers we produce, this is our, our sister company, we call it Nat Noodle Foods, where we send the broilers to, and we send, this is our, uh, our uh, consumer good arm of the company. This is where we sell the broilers, and we have this company, we have them all over the place, all over the country. Most of the supermarkets you can see today, you can you see our nut noodle chicken over there. Why I brought this slide is for you to know where our beds are coming from. They are properly produced so that we can sell to the real farmers. This is Amo Bing, this is our feed section. Yes, let me not dwell on this because uh, we produce much concentrate, yes. But the emphasis I want to just lay on here is that of the chick super starter crumb. We wrote here, start your bed right so that you can get your get good eggs, more eggs. If you don't start your bed right, you will have an issue. That's why we came up with this particular feed so that when you start your bed right, the best will grow well because it is optimally produced. It is purely chicks, ammo chicks, super starter crumb. That is the way the name we give to it. Why are we doing this? Because we know that egg production, you need quite a lot of profitability. Although any business that you want to do, you need a lot of profitability. If you are producing beds that are going to live for you, you need the maximum of eggs because it's because of the eggs that we are rearing the, the pullet. Same thing, the mortality rate will be low, very, very low. And at the end of the day, when they come in too late, you get your production, get it smooth. This is the new product we've introduced now. We call it the champion. Champion is purely the uh, ultimate uh, professional blower ration, which we have just uh, introduced recently is just about two weeks old. Three entering the market. I equally advise all of us. This is a, a product that, when you give it to your broilers, you achieve your faster growth. You know, attain better FCR for your beds. It is not quite expensive if you look at the price. If we send the price out to you now, you'll be shocked. Those of us that are on our platform and most of these agricultural platform, I'm sure they must have seen the prices. The price they are quite friendly very pocket friendly, is the one that you will buy. You won't spend too much money on it and you get the optimal result. These are the other product. I think the advert is with you there. It's a no lie bird. We developed it on our own. It's a dual purpose bird, purely for egg production and meat production. This one, we pride ourselves that we, we spent quite a lot of money, time, researching to come out with this particular product. It came from our own. Although we have quite a lot of people now trying to come up with different colored beds for now. We came out with the product purely for us to solve the issues of infant mortalities, you know, food insecurity and hunger, stunted growth among Nigerians. We want to ensure that those things are actually taken out of our country and even in Africa, because we are already doing it now in Nigeria and most of the West African countries. Our target is actually reach the whole of Africa for now, so that we can help our brothers and sisters for them to get, get good food to eat, ensure that they have something that will keep them going. Pure dual purpose. Dual purpose in the sense that they, they, they lay egg when it gets to the maturity range around 20 weeks, 22 weeks. And then the, the meat production, the male own, they grow so big that you can come up to about 5 kg and you sell, you make good money out of it. So these are the, these are the matured birds. These are the female and that the, the picture below are the male. They are quite big. You can sell them for good money. These are the basic characteristics. I don't need to read all of them now. Uh, the slides is, is, I know is meant for the association. So which 
It has been in public domain. They are very, very hardy, you know, very, very hardy, very strong resistance to disease. They, you know, the meat, they taste very well, it's less of fat. And they produce higher egg, more yield than the native fowl. We are not saying that this one is producing more eggs than our normal Isa brown. No, we are not saying that. Isa brown, basically, they are purely, the ammo layers that are purely for egg production. This one is just purely for dual purpose. It's good for a lot of our villagers. They can make use of it. We'll see some of the pictures now. Basically, what model do we use? Mother units, people that buy in large quantity rear and sell later on to the small holders, maybe in 20s and all that. So these are the same thing I said now. They rear it for about five weeks, the mother unit, and then sell it later on. So these are the color of the beds. They are multicolored. They're not just one color, not brown, not white, not green. They are multicolored the way we have actually produced it. So you get, these are some of the way we have taught our people how to rear it so that they do well, because it's more of bed for the rural dwellers to help our families at home, our women empowerment. It helps them get more income. They sit at home. My grandmother at home today in Delta, she has one or two or three, four of them. You can see four chicken will be giving you two eggs, three eggs in a day. You know, it's something that can relieve a lot of hunger from the villages. The smallholders, like I said, they buy it at five weeks from the uh, from the uh, mother units, and then they rear. If it's just about 20 they take, or 22, or even 10, they can take it up and keep rearing it. So these are the, the people where we did a lot of our enlightenment, we went to a lot of villages to sensitize the market, sensitize our mothers and our fathers, elderly men in the village, that this is what we have, and they are quite happy. We are all over the country today. There is no state that we are not in. We go them to go there to educate them. Elderly women, you know, rural dwellers. We educate them so that they will know exactly what to do, and they are very very happy doing doing this business with us. And I want must, we must tell you that for about about six, seven, eight years now, we've come up with this product. We've actually got very very good traction, very very good results, and we are still doing that. This is our other company that I mentioned to you, Diversity Solution. I told you these are one of the drugs. Quite a lot of you know it very well. Is what we tell ourselves to be the one stop, one stop livestock health, because we are into everything. We ensure that everything we do, we do it with so much efficiency, stressless in the sense that you don't have much problem. Whatever we give to you, the result will be there you will know that we have a good result. So what do we do? We stand on five legs, basically. We are into animal health production from the drugs and other things. We are into biosecurity. We don't have time to share all those products now. I just want you to see, want you to know the five legs that we stand on. Into animal health, biosecurity, we consult for people too. Those of those men, people who do not have that time to begin to build their farm and all that, all they need to do is just send their, their uh, they see of all to us. We go to the farm, look at the place, we assess it, we tell you what to do. We build from the beginning to the end, and we manage it for you and hand over to you. And at the end of the day, you are very, very sure of what you are doing. Equipment, cages, so many other things that we have, that's what we do. Laboratory, we have laboratory quite sophisticated, they're all over the country, and it is helping the poultry population. The last company that we have is the DSL Farmer. We said, uh, this company, we actually established this company to produce drugs locally. The drugs are quite cheap and it is so efficient. I must tell you, DSF Pharma, if you look at it, and I'm sure you must have seen the added. Uh, Ad banners, the advert where we started, and I'm sure we are going to products the very, very potent from abroad. So these are all the ranges that we have. We have our basic uh, drugs here. Uh, the ones we have, the ones we antiparasites, we have the antibiotics. We have the ones with product that we just introduced recently, dirty product. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all we have from our portfolio. We don't need to be showing you all the pictures and all that. I'm just giving you a summary of what we are doing today. And I'm sure some of the adverts that you have seen have told us the story of everything that in, in, the, in the group.
and we are still expanding. We want to make sure we are farmers, we are not speculators. We are farmers, the feed that we produce is what we use. The devil chick that we produce is what we use. So we are farmers, as we want to grow, we want a lot of farmers in this country to grow. So thank you very much. We appreciate you all. Like I said, when I started, we'll be there in Abiyokuta to support PANOG and so that PANOG can grow from strength to strength. Thank you also. That will be all for my... Hello, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lawrence. Um, we appreciate that very, very um, detailed presentation that shows how deep the ammo group is in the livestock value chain. From the breeding, the noila deal chicks, to the commercial um, breeding stocks, um, to hatching parent stocks, to actual hands-on commercial farming, and also processing of different protein products. We appreciate you. Thanks again for your sponsorship. That was very interesting. Um, their contact details will be shared also. You know how to reach them. And again, we just talked about the Nigerian Poultry Show, which is coming up at the end of the year. It's coming up um, November 2nd to thank the 4th. At, um, uh, yes, thank you, sir. Um, we're going to be using the Providence um, Event Center and the DLK Event Center um, on off M2 Abdullah Way by the NMPC um, gas station there. So please go to our website, nigeriapoultryshow.com. If you haven't visited, please visit and register. It's just 1,000 Naira. You register your interest, what categories, your name, um, what you want to get from that poultry um, from the poultry show, and then we'll have your information there. So when you come on site, on site registration will be smooth and straightforward. You can count on panel for that. Uh, our wonderful um, stakeholders that keep us alive and strong and functional in Ogun State. We have them laid out here. Sorry, there was a slight confusion when I was doing the presentation earlier. Um, for the Remo Zone, we have Alaji Shitu Babatunde Omi Sonya. Um, he's the chairman for the Remo Zone. Um, he's been very, very active in making sure the association activities are alive in that zone. We have Alaji Ola in Kalawao. He's the chairperson for Mowe, very vibrant, keeping us alive and active in the Mowe Zone. That's his contact information. Um, of course, we have Mr. Taiwa Biodu, He's the chairman for the Egba Zone. Um, and this is his contact information. You can also reach him for those who are in the Egba Zone. And we have Mrs. Lala. Um, this is her information. She's the chairperson for the Yewa Zone. Uh, this is her email address, and you know how to reach her. And uh, we also have the ex-official, Chief Olu Sonya Taiwo, is also an ex-official. I believe we have more ex-official. If you can help us navigate the screen so we can see um, their names. Um, if you can help me slide up so I can see more of the names of the ex-officials. Um, so just to let you know that we have a powerful team um, in the uh, Poultry Association of Nigeria Open State. This is not being done by ourselves alone, it's being done by all our team members, that the ones making sure that the farmers are able to access officials in the different zones and all activities are permeating the zones. Um, please feel free to reach out to them. You can do a screenshot, you can contact them whenever you want to. To be a member of Poetry Association of Nigeria Open State, please visit our website, panog.org.ng, um, uh, go there and uh, register, pay your dues, and become a PANOG uh, member, official PANOG member. We've said all our advantages and all the resources we, access, we, we give you access to. Now we have Affects. Affects, they're going to let you know what products they have and how we as farmers and uh, industry stakeholders can also key in. The presentation was very, very critical. We talked about the position for the 2021 20 to 2022 season, the outlook of the grains. Um, harvest, what are we looking at? How do we position? And um, Apex is also in the position to help us learn more and know what products they have to make us better ready. Uh, knowledge is power. And uh, we have um, Mrs. Idaya, who is here to share information on some of that uh, knowledge that we need to do. This is the right time. This is the right time to be ready for the season. And uh, Mrs. Idaya Salisu. Um, welcome on board, and uh, you have the floor. Let us know what Apex can do for us farmers. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Dr. Dr. Ope. Um, can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, we can hear you very well. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Ope. So first off, let me thank uh, PANOG for this opportunity 
to present to the members what we offer our product services at FX Commodity Exchange. So um, let me start by saying that um, the current, uh, this current season has been a bit of challenging for poultry farmers and members of um, PAN, because I believe large numbers of them will be poultry farmers in terms of uh, sourcing their raw material. So uh, some of which uh, the farmers were forced to cut down on production. Some were forced to sell off their beds to pay debt or even, uh, even close down totally. Um, so reasons, uh, so it be, it'd be nice to know what uh, was the reason behind all of this it was majorly because of the price of the raw material, which is largely maize and soybeans. So most, most of us here will be interested in knowing what are the factors that are likely to influence these prices and we can prepare better for the coming season. So first of one of the factors that um, is likely to affect the price of raw material is uh, the forces of demand and supply, where you have uh, more demand in the market than the supply. We could have uh, government policies, we could have insecurities where farmers are scared to even go into the farmland to farm or even harvest what they have planted. Or even or climate change, where there are no rains. So all of those factors are largely what we may not have control over. But what we may have control over is the access to information. So uh, largely, we all know that uh, information is very key. Uh, so access commodities, some of the middlemen take advantage of the access to information they have and where, which leaves the poultry farmers at the receiving end of having to buy maize or soybeans at the premium, premium price. So to break uh, this gap, if we at FX made it a point of duty to provide a platform where farmers can have access to the market directly, have access to price transparency, have access to price discovery, and also have access to real time and quick delivery of commodities. So I will, I would uh, start by share. I will share my screen now, so I could walk you through this platform where you can trade commodities directly in the comfort of your home or anywhere you have, and wait for your delivery. Uh, Doctor Pe. Uh, can I share my screen now? Yes, um, you'll be able to share your screen any moment from now. Uh, Mr. Ibiemi, kindly let her share her screen. Thank you. Please wait patiently. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. All right, thank you. Um, so here is the landing page of a uh, trading platform called Comex. Some of us here might have heard about it and some might have not, but Comex is a trading platform that gives you direct access to commodity trading either by buying or selling. So um, the first thing uh, to do when you get to the landing is to get registered and have access to the commodity or to the platform rather. So I would just click on get started. Register, then we we'll continue from there. Okay, now I've successfully signed up. You would, so when you go through this process by you're inputting your email, your password and your phone, you get an OTP on your 
phone and also in your email. So I would just put in the OTP received so I can have access into the platform. Yeah. This is a yeah. poultry industry or uh, agri in general leveraging fully on technology. I think um, this is quite impressive. Um, please stay tuned. All right. So uh, I'm in now. So I'll just go to login. To, so then I have to sign in again. Now I'll infuse my password. Now we are in, I'm officially in. So uh, looking at this, so you'll be asked a couple of questions and your response here will determine what you will see on your dashboard. So for this, for the purpose of this audience, so I believe uh, we'll be interested in taking uh, delivery of fiscal commodities. So here, are you interested in buying fiscal commodities? I'll click yes. Do you use fiscal commodities in your business? I'll use yes, I'll pick yes. Are you interested in taking fiscal delivery of commodity you buy on COMEX? I'll pick yes. Now, it's, it, this just gives you a step-by-step step step, uh, procedure on how you can trade on COMEX. First of, now you have your registered, you're logged in. The first thing you're supposed to do is fund your wallet, after which uh, you buy a commodity, join a com uh, community, which is optional for, for this audience if you're taking uh, fiscal delivery of your commodity. Then you, pu uh, you, put out, you put out a buy order, wait for it to get matched, and you dispatch. So here, this is how the dashboard looks. So over here, we have uh, the tabs, which here you have the overview of the entire platform. Here you have markets where you, you, where you uh, put in your orders and where you can see all the products that are available in the market at different prices and the percentage. And I'll show you what the view looks like. And here you have your portfolio, which tells you what uh, you have in your account the value of the securities that you have, then the community and your settings. So to start, I'll, I would fund, I'll click on fund your wallet, which is the first step. It's first step you're supposed to take when you log in. So this is a, a test app. So basically, you which will allow me fund directly because it's just a test app. But on the live app, you, you need to impute either your card details or transfer to an account number. So I'll just pick a uh, card payment with card. So let me put um, 100,000. So please be, be aware that using your card will attract uh, additional charges from Paystack. So here, this is because it's a test server. Yeah, you just click on success and then you click on pay and that's it. Your account, you get a notification that your account has been funded. So now that our account is funded, now that our account is funded, the, first, the next thing you're supposed to do is go into the market uh, to see what product offerings that you have in the market that you can buy and at what price. So as I was trying to explain earlier, so what you what the questions you were asked in initially when you logged in will determine what you see. So here we have different products and for different audiences. For for the for the purpose of this audience, 
we are interested in taking delivery of commodities. So you go to the board to pick delivery spots. Here you will now see um, all the pro uh, products available for delivery spots. So if you're interested in buying, you just click on buy from here and you impute. This is a test uh, server. I can't buy directly here, but these are all the informations that you need to impute. So the location where you want to buy the commodities, there's a drop down of different locations across Nigeria. You might be interested in buying maize from Oyo or maize from, uh, from Oshu Ogo, uh, Taraba, Castina, whatever location that you're interested in buying uh, your commodities from. You just pick the location, you input your price and the quantity you want to buy. So for the purpose of this audience, uh, the, the minimum contract you can buy on, on this um, board is one metric ton, which is equivalent to about 10 bags of 100 kg maize or soybeans or whatever commodities you want to buy. So you impute your uh, price and you have the total and you place your order. So this order, when you place this order, it goes directly to the order book. Here is the other book. Yeah, it shows all the others that people or, or let's say players in the market, be it buyer or in seller, uh, have put out there to buy. So for instance, okay, so I'll just, so here, this is the cash settled board. And yeah, so I'll just click, since the audience are interested in deliverable commodities, so I'll just click on deliverable spot. So here in the market, we have, uh, a buy order at uh, of a buy order for maize quantity hundred metric ton location cardinal to another price. So if you're a seller and you think uh, you have this volume and you can deliver at this price in this location, all you need to do is to put up a a corresponding sell order to match this buy order. And if so, to match the buyer, the same goes for uh, for uh, for sellers. You can put up your orders on the market, and any buyer can come into the market and see what is available. Picks up your price, and it gets put up the order, and it gets matched. So let's say let's say we had put up a trade, and it's being matched. Is ready, Matt. Okay, so, so, so let me just go back to the product what we have itemized so I can run you through all these stages. So here, like I said, this is the other way, other book where you have all the buy orders and the sell orders in the market. Yeah, this is. Uh, this might take a time because it's going to load you the chart. That, that's the price history of commodity can filter by commodities. So it will take you to another page. Sorry. I'm trying to go back. This is very, very interesting. Um, what uh, Ms. Mrs. Adaya Salisu is showing us is that we can actually book and buy grains and trade right from the comfort of our home um, using the Apex platform. All we have to do is just register and uh, all the security codes are there and uh, it's a safe platform for us to actually buy. So we can actually do some uh, position taking, either if you want to make money or if you actually need physical stock. This is very interesting. We let them shed more light on that um, while they are going ahead to um, give us what they have for us. Um, Mr. Daya, are you ready? Yes, please. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. All right, just so, let me so I'll just, just go ahead and take over when you're ready. Yeah, so I'll just share my screen again. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, your questions will be answered. The speakers are here on standby and will answer your questions, okay? They are being collected. So just stay tuned and all the questions will be uh, answered. Thank you for the interesting question. Um, so uh, confirm you can see my screen now. Yes, we can see you. 
Okay, so here, here is the open orders. So whatever order you've put in the market that has not been matched. So is at this point, you just need to click, uh, click on this open orders to see your open orders in the market. And then we have closed trade. So whatever trade that you have put up, that it has been matched. So you, you'll find it at uh, closed uh, trade. Then also canceled order. Maybe you, you your order has been in the market for over for a while and you think you want to uh, put up a new price. So you decide to cancel the order. So you find all your canceled order orders on that this canceled orders. So uh, back to the uh, product view. So let's assume that you've put up a, a buy order and your order has been matched. The next thing for you to do is go into your portfolio. Go into your portfolio. So unfortunately, I because this is a new account, yes, sir. and you're unable. Sorry, that was Hello? nothing. We can hear you. So let me just go back then. So unfortunately, because we have not, we are not, this is a Can we all mute our uh, presentations? Can we all mute so we don't interrupt the speaker? Sorry about that. Please go ahead. No problem, it's fine, sir. Thank you, sir. So because this is a test server and we're unable to put up a proper trade. So on this uh, interface, this is where you uh, you see the uh, the commodities that have been matched in your portfolio. So under this place is where you request dispatch of this commodity. So maybe your, uh, your, you have secured uh, your commodity, let's say in Kaduna 2, and you want to dispatch to your location in the Southwest. So all you need to do is to click on dispatch. There's supposed to be a, um, there's supposed to be a listed of different securities here in your, in your, portfolio, then you just click on dispatch and the dispatch order would send to us and we'll take it up from there. So right here is supposed to be a reports where you can track your statement of account and all your dispatches. So if you need to know where your the state that treats your dispatch is, you come here and you track it on that dish report. So I believe uh, that's a uh, major. Let me see if I can log in into a different account that has um, that has um, sorry. Apologies, I'm trying to log in into a different account where I can show you the different, uh, how you can dispatch and I'm, I'm having a bit of challenge with that. Uh, let me just stop sharing my screen, then I'll come back up. Apologies for that. Yeah, I'll just share my screen. I apologize for that. Um, I'll just share my screen now. I think I'm able to assess the different accounts where I can show you how the dispatch, how you can place a dispatch. Okay, yes. So here are the different commodities. So here is the portfolio. Here are different commodities that are already been matched into this user's account. And for you to request dispatch, You just, uh, okay, sorry, this is, um, yes. So you need to click on deliverable security. So you, yes, so you just click on dispatch here and it's because the location at which this person has requested to buy the commodities at Castina. 
So you just put in the volume, let's assume 10 metric ton. So here, deliver commodity, deliver commodities to my location if you want to deliver to your location. Or there's another option if you want to pick it up yourself from a warehouse in Castina. So here, if you're interested in picking it up in a warehouse in Castina, all you need to do is request dispatch, click on request dispatch and request dispatch is sent to us. You see, you can see you get a successful message saying request dispatch as you send and your dispatch will be processed. But if you are interested in taking delivery, you need to highlight this and impute your address, let's say open states, local government, uh, Let's just pick one. Then you just request. Sorry, this is that. Yeah. So, uh, open states. Yes. Let's say if. Then a request uh, will be sent to us. So that's about it. Um, how you can easily place an order for maize in the comfort of your home and um, you have the maize delivered to you in the next uh, 48 hours. So this is just for you to have asset, access to necessary information for you to uh, be able to be competitive and prepare for the next season and uh, prepare for the next season to, uh, to buy uh, your commodities at the better rate, to have it delivered in good time and to have direct access to the market rather than being at the mercy of different middlemen. And at the end of the day, you, have, you buy the maize at the premium price. Thank you very much. I think that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I've been able to uh, deliver and you you come and assess the platform to buy your maize and soybeans. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Idaya Salisu. We are very, very much grateful for this uh, presentation. I will believe our people have actually uh, got some things to write down and for their usefulness. Uh, thank you once again. We are so grateful for the effort FX put in into this uh, presentation. Uh, once again, I want to say a good job to all our presenters and uh, I'm sure we have some few, few questions ready, uh, which um, uh, we would like our presenters to be ready to answer or attend to them, one after the other. Uh, before then, I want to remind you, uh, every one of us that all our presentations are being recorded and we made it available on the YouTube channel. So if you are interested in it, you can go back to one and check and have a download of it for your own use. Uh, I would like to take uh, questions now. And the few questions we have is what we are going by. Um, this question goes to uh, Mr. Hemes. I'm sure you are still on, 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 on stand, sir. Um, they said FX having warehouse across the country. Can we be categorical about this cost? We did not experience this. Uh, last time, Panog and Pan Southwest dealt with them. Mr. Hemens, please, can you please uh, shed more light on this? Um, one of our members wants to know, uh, you said uh, there are warehouses across the whole country and wish to know uh, what actually happened sometimes when Panog and uh, uh, Pan Southwest had um, dealt a uh, uh, business deal with uh, FX and uh, we have to, I think they have to go to the far north to go and pick the raw materials uh, purchased uh, from FX or um, from CBN through FX. So I don't know uh, if you have anything to say to that, please. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure we have uh, Mr. MX on stand. Uh, okay, can uh, anybody from uh, AFEX attend to that, please. If anybody is uh, also from AFEX that can attend to that question.
Sorry, I've been appalled for not for Yeah, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, as regards the question on so time. Mr. Denny, please come about to attend to the question, please. Hi again, can you hear me? Clearly, clearly sir. Go on, Mr. Denny. Thank you. That, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Thank you so much. Yes, we have even more than um, the four warehouses across Nigeria, but typically most of our warehouses were located closer to most of our aggregation points in Nigeria in the northern part. But right now we have also moved most of our warehousing operations down to the Southwest. We now have in Ibadan, we have in Lagos, we have in Ogun State. Um, with those new locations, we are definitely sure that we'll be able to offer more service and quick delivery on like experiences that had occurred in the past during the logistics service we provided for the CBMS. Okay, um, thank you very much. There is still one for FX, probably you can still attend to that before leaving. Um, uh, through the platform of uh, uh, made, how made uh, quality, okay, this person is trying to know that uh, purchasing maize through your commodity exchange uh, platform, how do one ascertain the moisture content of the maize? How is being handled through your own uh, at your own end uh, before uh, people can purchase what uh, they, 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 they actually have the knowledge about the moisture content of the pro of the products? I don't know if you got the question correctly, sir. Yes, yes sir. I, I got the question. Oh, sorry. Apologies, I didn't know someone else was answering that. Yeah, I had uh, responded also, but well, we, we have standard grades that are acceptable in our warehouses. And before we dispatch any meat or commodity to our clearance, we conduct thorough quality checks on various parameters such as the moisture content, the dry matter, foreign materials, aflatoxin and mycotoxins that has also been mentioned by some of the participants of this event, just to ensure that our, our clients receive quality meals because we know that they, they use it to feed their animals. So we would not send our grains that will cause damage to their stock. So for okay. every meal- Sorry, just to add to what my colleague had said. Also, um, for any commodity that is being uh, a seller wants to put up on the exchange, or well, the commodity has to be stored in our warehouse for us to ascertain the quality and do all necessary testing. Then also, if is to uh, if he wants it to be stored in his or his you know his or our warehouse, we also can deploy one of our we warehouse managers to ascertain and take custody of the commodity. So that way we can be sure of the quality and do all necessary tests on the commodity. Oh, okay, okay, thank you very much. I'm trying to uh, get the information correctly there that you said uh, uh, the, the mess is just, just being bought directly from the supplier, but it has to go through FX uh, that uh, before you can uh, accept the mess, such mess from or uh, such product from any um, um, supplier, that's go through some text to ascertain so the quality parameters of the maze. So assuring our people that it's not that they were buying directly from the supplier, but that has to go through effects. Thank you very much. Because the, the next question also is asking something similar to that 
which I think uh, your answer has actually uh, dealt with that as well. So we don't have to go to that one again. But that person is asking, how would you know the commodity is mycotoxin free before payment? I think that has been answered already with your last uh, response. Then someone here said, um, um, okay, traceability. Okay, I think this question is for uh, Amo Bing. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, are you still on stand, sir? Mr. Lawrence. Okay, someone is asking, um, what are the prices? What are the what are your feed prices at Amo Bing? I don't know if any team of Amo Bing is still on stand that is willing to attend to that question before we move on. That those are the few questions we have that we're attending to. So if uh, Mr. Lawrence is still on stand, should please uh, attend to that, or any team of uh, Amo Bing should please attend to that for us before we move to the next thing on the agenda. I okay, think the price, I think, for, the price for Amo Bing that was, was I have I've submitted it to the price for Amo Bing that was requested for. I submitted it to our chat box. Oh, okay. I can see. I can see the chat box. As Amo champion in industry uh, prices yes. are yes. Uh, yes. Brella Super Starter Crumbs. Uh, yes. 7,235 Naira, Brella Super Starter Finisher Pellet, 7,175 Naira. Yes, Thank you very price. much, uh, Mr. All right. Apex. Um, okay, there's another question here for Apex. Does Apex partner with Swama for planting of maize? Uh, Mrs. Daya, I don't know if you can take that for us, please. Yes, please, definitely. We partner with uh, farmers. We currently have uh, over 10,000 farmers registered with us that we work with every season by providing them uh, fertility bond in terms of inputs, fertilizers, herbicides. And we also stay with them throughout the process by, by training them and ensuring they, they use best practices on their farmland to assessing a proper uh, yield uh, per hectare. So yes, we partner with farmers. Okay. We have heard from uh, Mrs. Hidayat that uh, FX partners with uh, farmers are interested to go into planting during the season. So, and the uh, inputs will be uh, help uh, the, uh, in acquiring and others. So if you are interested in that aspect, please you can contact EFEX uh, as well. Uh, okay, there's another question here for EFEX. They said, who covers for transportation? Uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Adini can uh, uh, attend to that for us, please. Okay, Mrs. Sidaya, can you do that for us? Someone is asking who covers, who covers for transportation? Okay, so once the dispatch order has been made, an email is sent to us notifying us that there's a uh, dispatch order from this account and our team, will, our team will take it up by calling the client to negotiate the transportation. And once an agreement is made, the, an invoice, a transportation invoice will be sent to the client. And once the payment is made, the dispatch kicks off. Okay, thank you very much. I think that has been attended to as well. I myself, I think I have a question for FX. Um, uh, the question is, when uh, this goods has been, has, been, has been dispatched from your own warehouse, how do we monitor the safety of these goods to the destination? I mean, in terms of the quantity that left the warehouse down to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the um, buyer of the goods, uh, like when they load uh, 30 tons of maize from the warehouse and when they got to the farm, they are getting by like 29, 28 tons. Who, who, who bears the shortage? Who handle that part? Please, can you please address that, Ma? Okay, so um, about that, so um, is <laughs> is a very, uh, it, it has been a very uh, challenging situation for us also, but 
we try to ensure that uh, whatever uh, uh, or product that have been sent out, we we send an escort with the truck to ascertain that the commodity arrives at the number of bags that's been sent and the quantity is is uh, is complete. Then also another thing we do is uh, we don't work with just anyhow transporters. So our transporters are verified, and if we have any issues with uh, missing. Uh, volume of dispatch uh, commodities. We are, we are in a relationship with them and we will come to an agreement about it. Okay, so you are assuring us that if such thing happens, definitely FX will take the responsibility for it. So yes, you can report, out. you can, yes, you, you, uh, the clients can report the situation and we'll do our investigations and we'll come out with a res uh, resolution. Oh, okay, thank you very much, our presenters, uh, Mr. Denny. Uh, we are so grateful, Mrs. Sidayas. We are so grateful. Ambo Bing crew, we are very, very much grateful. Uh, Sevak, uh, we are very grateful as well to you. Uh, uh, also, Adema Kia crew, we are very much grateful for your pre presentations. Uh, on this note, I would like to uh, uh, call on uh, Alaji Muiza Royemu if he's on stand to give us a closing prayer for today. Uh, uh, but before then, let me quickly uh, give uh, a closing um, remark uh, of today's program. So, Balaji uh, Moise, I you come on board. I think uh, our closing remark goes, uh, goes thus. On behalf of the chairman and the entire executive of PANOG, I want to spread my most sincere appreciation to God Almighty, who has been with us from the beginning to the end of this program. I want to say thank you to the chief guest who gave us uh, his vital time from his busy schedule to grace this webinar program, to furnish us with all we need to know about maize and soy outlook for 2021 season. I also want to express our profound gratitude to our sponsors for supporting and ensuring this program holds. And to all presenters, we say thank you for exhibiting your products on this platform. I would like to place my heart, uh, heart say thanks to the particip uh, participators, audience of this program for making today program, today's program worthwhile. I also want to uh, also love to show appreciation to the people who have been the strength of the association at the back door. Once again, I would love to thank Dr. Okwe, who is our anchor for today, and uh, also our technical person, Mr. B. M. Ayodele. We, uh, we thank you for being with us. Uh, and uh, it has uh, remained a pronounced pleasure to us uh, for having you on this program. Have a great evening. I don't know if you can just uh, give us a closing prayer so that we can round it up here today. Okay, I'm not sure Alaji uh, Muizaroyo is still with us. Um, Okay, on this note, I would love to uh, say the closing prayer. I say thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, allowing us to start this program uh, in good faith. And uh, through the program, uh, we we'll give glory to God for uh, ensuring us uh, is a, a successful program. I say thank you to everybody once again. And uh, uh, we have come to the end of the program. Uh, I would like to drop the curtain on the program now. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, for coming on board.